Okay, in this video I want to talk about getting your stubborn ball pythons to eat. Uh, right out of the egg, we're talking about their first meal. So what I'm not going to talk about is sort of your typical case, just getting a baby on feed. This is for, uh, you know, the majority of the clutch has eaten. Uh, you've got one or two that are holding out and, uh, you know, a week and a half has gone by, two weeks have gone by after everyone else has eaten. They're still not doing anything. You're not at the point that you want to try to assist feed yet. Um, just want to show you the method that I use to get them going. Okay, so the first thing that I like to check, if you've got a baby ball python that's not been eating, everyone else has eaten, take a look at it, its body. So sometimes, uh, for whatever reason, if they're not picking up on food, some of them just haven't figured out drinking yet, and they can get really dehydrated. So if your snake is kind of like a, a leathery texture to its skin or really triangulated, um, one thing that I like to do is first you really want to get them hydrated and feel down around the vent here. Uh, sometimes they'll, it's not really a full impaction, but they'll get some urates or uh, fecal matter or whatever from their, uh, uh, from the yolk uh, that just kind of kind of plugs things up and they're not feeling really well and they're you know odds of them eating on their own when they're going through something like that and really dehydrated uh, and they don't have a lot of energy it's pretty slim so as uh, just like most folks uh, we got a lot of water bottles in our incubator uh, so what I typically do I'll take one of those bottles and a small container. This container is going to become really important later. So this is a Sterilite 1.2 quart locking lid container. Um, I don't know that the brand matters at all, but just some kind of really small container uh, with a locking lid. All right. so I'll take that. I'll take one of these bottles out of the incubator so this water is right at 88 degrees and I want to put just enough that when I put the snake in there the top half of its body is still going to be above water and it can get out of it but oftentimes what you'll find is if you have a dehydrated snake as soon as its mouth goes in that water and it figures out like hey I can drink this it's going to stay there for 30, 45 seconds, just gulping down water. So give it a chance to come out of the water on its own. Um, you know, stand by. Don't just leave it unattended, but give the snake a chance to drink a little bit uh, if it wants to. If it doesn't drink, uh, that's okay too. Snakes are surprisingly good at hydrating uh, through their vent. So. Uh, either way, this is going to be good for the snake. So there you can see the snake wasn't dehydrated, but it was thirsty, so it's lapping a little bit down. And it'll stay down there until he's done having a drink, and that's what we want. Okay, so about 45 seconds in, decided he's had enough water. So what I would typically do at this point, uh, if I had a snake that was dehydrated, is take the snake, put it back in its enclosure, give it a couple of hours to just kind of take that water and put it to use within its body. Uh, the odds of this are really slim uh, with a baby ball python, but if for whatever reason, uh, you know, your snake's head gets down in the water and he doesn't drink, uh, then what you want to do is leave the snake in the water with its vent submerged for 15 minutes, supervised, don't leave the tub, uh, you know, just let the snake kind of hang out in there and soak some of that moisture up, um, and then you're going to do the exact same thing, put them back in the tub, uh, let them hang out for a couple of hours, uh, and, and put that water to use. Okay, so we start all of our ball pythons right out of the egg out on rats. Um, 
they're very seldom you'll have a really small hatchling and you have trouble finding a, a, a rat that's going to be small enough and still have enough fur on it to keep the snake interested in that case we might have to use a small mouse uh, but what i mean by that is if you put something like this little mouse pinky in with a hatchling ball python who's not had its first meal and isn't just total just total just total i don't know if you noticed but i just accidentally dropped that pinky from about six inches up yeah i feel bad so he's you're gonna go back with mama he's, he's not gonna get fed off today famished most of the time uh, they're not going to pay a whole lot of attention to it uh, they, they cool off pretty quick and they don't you know this guy's moving around quite a bit right now because I've been messing with him but as a rule they don't move a whole lot um, this rat I don't know if you can see that but he's starting to get just a little bit of fuzz um, and I've found that that makes quite a bit of difference um, you know, they're more active, and that's usually the smallest size that we will use to get our ball python started. Um, however, uh, you've been trying something like that, it's not working. Uh, we want to move to something that's got all of its hair already. Something like this little mouse here. Um, it seems to me like they've got a, a lot higher body heat the snake can register on but also they're just annoying they move around a whole lot uh, and they'll agitate the snake and that's what we want we want to try to get the baby a little bit pissed off um, most of the time uh, that's what it takes to get them to go after okay so we've got a snake that's starting to hydrate that's been you know two hours or so had a chance to kind of rest and uh, calm down a little bit from being in the in the water so a lot of times if your snake is really dehydrated you're going to notice a big difference uh, in the way that they look physically after just getting a little bit of water in them uh, but you want to at that point take the snake and well first let's prep our enclosure so we're going to take the little tub that we soaked the snake in and we want to dump this water out water out, left just a little bit in, and take a folded up paper towel, put in there, soak up just a little bit of that water so it keeps some humidity in the tub, might put just a splash more in, okay, now what I want to do is take our rodent that we talked about before, want something that's got some hair on it, not quite big enough that its eyes are open, not at the age that it's going to be bitey at all. I mean, probably couldn't bite if it wanted to. And I want to take the snake, put it in this really small enclosure, put the rodent in with it, lid on, and we're going to take the whole thing put it right in the incubator. So what I want to do here, turn the lights out on the incubator and go away. Just really quick, I want to show you what I mean about how annoying these little mice are. So that little mouse is going to crawl all over this snake. Um, agitate them and it won't be long before this this snake has enough of it um, the first couple of bites might be defensive and that's probably what you're getting in your six quart tubs right there they'll strike at the mouse but then they'll kind of or rat whatever it may be then they'll kind of recoil and go hide a little bit well the thing about these little tubs is the snake can't get away so you know he'll try that he or she will try that strike and recoil method and realize that's not working um, and decide in short order that it's time for some more drastic measures. Okay, so you went away for a little while, you come back, and this is what you're going to find. You should 
would hopefully have a fat little snake and no rodent. Uh, now, of course, it's not going to happen like that every time. Um, if the snake is really dehydrated, I might do, I, I might try a couple of times uh, to get that snake rehydrated. But I would certainly try this little box method. Um, usually, usually three weeks is uh, three weeks after the first shed is is when I start thinking about assist feeding. Uh, really, really try not to do that unless I absolutely have to. So now, of course, after a few meals, uh, your snake should look like this. All right, guys, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Hopefully it's helpful to you. Uh, these little boxes have really been a big help to us. It's kind of been a game changer around here as far as getting our stubborn ball pythons to eat. Um, let us know if it works for you uh, or if there's a little trick that you do that maybe works uh, if you think better than this. I'd like to hear about it. Um, anyway, uh, thanks and appreciate it.